today, um, uh, me and my colleague Kelly, we will be presenting the updates to the data side uh, meter data schema. Uh, that includes the introduction of schema 4.5 and the deprecation of schema point uh, schema 3. Um, I'll briefly go through uh, introducing the 4.5 release and the associated changes and uh, how, do, how to start using it. And Kelly will walk us through the schema 3 deprecation um, and you'll hear more about that in the second half. So, um, Let's have a look at uh, the 4.5 release. And, but, but before we do that, um, I would like to invite you on a trip in the history of the data side met metadata schema, which was introduced over 10 years ago and has experienced substantial changes since then. Uh, that evolution process um, includes both major and minor version releases. And that in itself had, has led to significant development. Some of the main areas of the development includes the expansion of the variety of resources that we can describe, uh, such as with the resource type general um, categories. And uh, the growth of the schema as well has made it easier to diversify the kind of things that can be connected use, using uh, the, our the metadata such as related identifiers and relation types. So in essence, this enables the users to more efficiently capture deeper links within the metadata structure and capture a wider range of resources. And we look at some of those uh, uh, some of, of uh, of those uh, resources in the 4.5 update today um, with the addition of new source type generals. And we'll also look at some related identifiers and relation types. Um, and as I mentioned, the, uh, well, uh, as I mentioned, the schema um, release, uh, data side releases new schema versions, both major and or minor, and this is done approximately about one to two years. Uh, the difference is the major versions, they introduce breaking changes. So such as schema four, for example, that was introduced back in 2016, I believe. Um, by, and by breaking changes, we mean the changes that are not backward, backwards compatible. Um, the minor versions like the most recent one, 4.5, um, it does not contain breaking changes. And um, also, uh, we're going to hear about a bit more about what happens to older schemas, like schema 3, uh, which will be discontinued from January 2025. But I'll leave that part to Kelly to walk us through uh, uh, later. And how does this happen? So, um, uh, how how is the schema itself developed? So the changes come from the community contributions. So each suggestion undergoes a review process, a prioritization process by the data side team before it reaches the metadata working group. The data side metadata working group are a team of wonderful, dedicated volunteers that collaborate with us. And there they discuss the changes and agree on a proposal. And then we share the proposed changes with the community for feedback. So you can learn about this whole process and contribute um, on our website. So have a look uh, at it and feel free to reach out to us. Um, when today we'll, we'll look at some of those changes that stemmed from this process. Um, so uh, I mentioned some research uh, research type generals, and to that we added instrument support in 4.5. So this new addition uh, can be used uh, in other instances with where resource type general is used. And it provides a way uh, or a standardized method for identifying and referencing individual physical devices. The goal here is to impl of implementing this is to provide the repositories with a standard mechanism to identify and reference this instrument. And when I say instruments here, we mean the actual 
physical items used in the search and data collection, not really their digital descriptions or designs. Um, and to support with the capture of instruments data, we have added additional um, relation types and related identifiers, such as is collected by or collect. And this is to build clear connections between the instrument and the related research output. And we hope that by collecting this essential information, we'll uh, have a better, more comprehensive understanding of the research process. And uh, together to su further support the introduction of instruments, we have made a few changes and additions. Um, and these are mainly for definitions, for example. So we have updated the definitions of title to include the use of the title property to indicate the name of the instrument. Um, uh, also the creator property definition to indicate the name of the manufacturer or the developer of the instrument. And the contributor property definition to indicate the name of the institute responsible for the management and the maintenance of the instrument. Um, the definition of uh, alternate identifier has also been updated to reflect some details like the possibility of adding local or other identifiers for the instruments, such as serial numbers. The instrument's description can also be included uh, in the description property using description type technical info as a controlled vocabulary. So for guidance with creating the metadata for instruments, we've also created a mapping for PID and uh, uh, schema. Um, and you can have a look at that in the documentation. So I'm not going to go too much into it today. Um, and, and one of the other uh, t resource types that we've added is a new control term for study registration. And this has been added to, again, resource type general, wherever they are. And um, the specific type of study registration, whether it's um, pre-registration pre, pre or registered report, uh, this distinction can be specified in the free text uh, resource type field. So that's where you can add uh, additional details about the nature and the type of the registration. And both types of reports are very essential for improving research integrity and reproducibility. And we have seen an incre increase in their use and they are increasingly being seen as really important con contributors to scientific transparency. And that increased adoption is a, is a reflection uh, of our culture towards more open and reproducible research practices. So we're really happy to see that and support it. Um, one, uh, yeah, so if you're familiar with the data site um, schema, you might or have already encountered connection metadata. And we support connection metadata to associate uh, the DOIs with related works, people, or organization. And the key feature here is the capacity to create connection between other persistent identifiers. So essentially, we're creating a network of interconnected research through the associations of different persistent identifiers. And in uh, schema 4.5, the publisher property has been updated to support identifiers for publishers. So now the repositories could ch choose to specify a publisher identifier to unambiguously identify the publisher of that resource. So similar to affiliation identifier, which we introduced in 4.3, uh, the publisher identifiers can support any identifier scheme, but we really recommend the use of raw IDs for an organization. So, um, but that also meant that we had to update the structure of publisher. So you might have been 
uh, more familiar with the previous publisher as uh, a string value, the carrying the publisher's name. Uh, but now it looks a bit more like this. <laughs> so that's for it to be able to carry the scheme and uh, URI, the publisher identifier, and so on. And this procedure required uh, some adjustments to our APIs, uh, APIs and services. Um, and I want to stress that content negotiation and the data side GraphQL API will be adjusted to support this new publisher format. So if you want to learn more about it and about this process in details, please go to our um, support site where we have, have it a bit more detailed. Um, what other changes did we include? So with each schema version, we do, uh, apart from introducing new controlled vocabularies like we've seen, or relation, uh, relationship types, we've also made some updates uh, to documentation to clarify certain definitions or provide a bit more nuanced guidance. And um, in schema 4.4 now, we, uh, 4.5, uh, we've included updated definitions for uh, physical object and resource type general. And, and this improvement was to make it a bit more inclusive for samples and uh, re reflect uh, our support for sam uh, samples registrations. Um, other guidances that have uh, been updated um, and, or newly added as the guidance for related item. And this one uh, defines when and how it should be used. So for example, if you do have a related resource that does not have an identifier, then we recommend using the related item property. And if you, on the other hand, have a related resource that does have an identifier, then we recommend using the related identifier property as it should always be used. And then on top of that, you can add, use the related item property to provide information about the associated resource. So this version, um, uh, in, in this version, upgrade notes, we provide a real thorough explanation of, of that. Um, and you can access it here. And if you haven't already noticed, we have read the docs, which is, uh, I'm going <laughs> to tell you a little bit more about now. Um, so those new guidance pages are in, uh, are now in read the docs. Previously, we had the schema documentation uh, published in PDF. But we switched to read the docs for 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 schema four point five because that makes it easier to have to use the schema documentation on the web. It also makes it easier for us if they decide to make some minor changes like typos and the like. And we don't have to wait till the next release to correct something like that. So we've moved um, we've moved to read the docs. We've also moved around some of the content to two new sections, uh, mainly mappings and guidance. Um, you can access this directly on, on, on the link I have here, but you can also access it from the main schema.datasite.org page. So, and there you'll see a link to the documentation under access documentation. You could st still have the documentation in PDF if you wish so by exporting it. And in the event that we do make any small edits or type of corrections, uh, that will be reflected in the PDF file and the export, or it should include the, the date when we last updated it. Um, and on top of that, you can find the whole schema and XSD and our release notes, um, complete examples in XML and JSON and all of that on the main site. Um, Right. So, what? Uh, what now? Now, um, how can you use Schema four point five for creating and updating DOIs? You can do that across all DOI registration methods. So REST API, MDS API, Fabrica. So if you're using, um, if you're some doing JSON submissions via REST API, the metadata is automatically um, created using the latest version, that's 4.5 in this case. If you're submitting 
if you're doing XML submissions, whether it's REST API or MDS or Fabric file upload, we really encourage you to specify the kernel. So add the specification uh, as 4.5 in this uh, case to use the latest backward compatible minor version. Um, for Fabric form users, uh, the changes are available on the Create DOI form. Um, and keep in mind that updating and providing um, the the DOIs is provide uh, updating previous DOIs is supported regardless of the registration methods. Um, um, and finally, uh, we really uh, encourage you to start using the new terms we've introduced, such as instrument, study registration, uh, along along with the new relationship types or relation types uh, as as in is collected by or collects. And we'd love also to see uh, more identifiers with the publisher identifiers. So, so we would really encourage you to enrich the metadata when you're providing, uh, um, uh, when you're registering your DOIs or if you're updating them. So yeah, um, another Final thing for repositories using schema three, it's important to really start using four, but I'll leave that to Kelly to guide us through it. And for now, I think that's all I have. So I'm happy to take any questions if you have any. Um, okay. Um, let me see. I think uh, Kelly has already answered some of the questions. Uh, or maybe some one, someone can help me here. <laughs> yeah. Um. Let's see. I think so. There's a question around um comparing these identifiers to what's set out in the Common Core metadata schema. Um, I'm just confirming which schema we were talking about there. Um, we don't have a crosswalk to that at the moment. Um, we're happy to support you with mapping between that schema and schema 4.5. If that's something you're looking to do, um, you can reach out to us at support at dataside.org if you're wondering about like how a field might correspond there. Um, yeah, also seeing a question around the motivation of um, oh. having both related identifier and related item. Um, it's a really interesting question. Um, I think with, so with related item, it can also support resources that do not have a related identifier. Um, and we're looking at in the future how we might streamline that. Um, but for now they are um, separate properties. So you can continue using related identifier um, as it's been um, since I think the start of the schema. So with just the identifier, um, but you could also have the additional information related item um, with or without an identifier in that property. Yeah. Have we missed any questions? Because I, I can't uh, see them properly. <laughs> yeah, um, I think there's one more that just came in. Um, and I think we've got time for this, yeah. Um, so for items in the schema that only accept preset values, resource type general, et cetera, do you have the list yeah. of these preset values available? Yes, and yeah. I can drop a link to that section. Um, so in the docs. I'll put it, I'll type it, answer in the Q&A here. There's um, an appendices section that has the control list values for those. So that includes resource type, general, relation type, um, others. And so you can check that out in the, in the new schema documentation site. Um, if we have, ex I see a question here, if we have examples, Tools for use cases for research and resource IDs. Um, I would say it would be, uh, it would be the for in our guidelines, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> um, yeah, I think for so, just confirm that I understand research resource. Yeah. D. Um, okay, you're talking about our RID. Sorry, I was like, I know that um, acronym. Yeah. So yes, we're actually, we're looking at um, have us to connect our RIDs to the data site schema, um, but we don't have an example that specifically includes that yet. Um, the question from Vida, um, are there guidelines for how to best use the pittance 
instrument schema, um, a granularity of what counts as an instrument, et cetera. We have the mapping. And... Yeah. Um, I think that it doesn't specifically address like what level of granularity you can assign a DOI to. Like we are somewhat, we're agnostic to that, um, but there might be more community guidance around that. Um, I would check out like what the PID Inst RDA group has produced and see if there's anything um, in there that kind of speaks to this question. Yeah. Um, and then I think we've got time for, yeah, one more here. So um, Dataverse 6.1 is currently compliant with Datacite 3.1. Um, have you heard when Dataverse will support 4.5? Um, I'm not specifically familiar with the different Dataverse version numbers. I believe they are on schema four for the latest version. Um, and I don't know specifically about 4.5, but that would be a good question for um, the Dataverse team. Mm -hmm. So I think we've covered all the questions unless I missed something in the chat. Right. In that case, I'll just hand it over to Kelly to, to guide us through the schema three defecation. Thank you. All right. And we just um, switch over to sharing. Um, and we can keep, if you've got more questions on schema 4.5, please keep posting those and we can see if we've got time to address them at the end here. So let me just start sharing screen set up here. All right. So yeah, in this next part of this webinar, we're just gonna go over the scheme of three deprecation plans um, and what repositories can do to prepare for these changes right away. And so first, I just, I wanna clarify what we mean when we say schema three. And when we say schema four, so schema three and schema four are both major versions of the data site metadata schema. Um, schema three was released back in 2013, and this major version had two minor versions, 3.0 and 3.1. And then schema four um, is the most recent major version, and this was first released in 2016. And so when we say schema four, we're referring to all minor versions with 4.x, so everything from 4.0 up to and including 4.5. So when we release minor versions of the schema, um, these do not include breaking changes. So this means, for example, that when going from 4.4 to 4.5, um, 4.5 is backward compatible. So if you were creating metadata following schema 4.4, that record is also valid per schema 4.5. On the other hand, for major versions, these can include breaking changes. And so between schema three and schema four, there were two key breaking changes. Schema four changed the resource type property from recommended to required, and that includes the required attribute resource type general. Um, and schema four also deprecated the previous contributor type funder um, and replaced it with a new property funding reference. And so this means that if your schema three DOIs um, either don't have that resource type property, or if they are using that contributor type funder, these will not be compatible with schema four until you make changes. And so in addition to those two breaking changes, there've also been um, numerous other changes and new additions since schema three. And so when you're transitioning to schema four, you can also start to take advantage of all of these new properties and sub properties that weren't previously available. And so these include the two um, major properties, funding reference and related item, as well as their various sub properties that were added to existing properties. And for those sub properties, um, I'd encourage you to take a look in particular at the affiliation identifier um, and the publisher identifier property, um, sub property that was just added in 4.5. Um, these are both included um, for linking DOIs to related organizations using PIDs. So we've also added a lot of um, control list values in schema three, including the new ones in 4.5 that Sarah highlighted earlier. Um, and because schema four requires resource type general, I'll draw attention to the expansion of this list. We're seeing a lot of older DOIs that use the text resource type general. And now that has more specific alternatives um, like preprint, journal article and report, and others on this list. 
So if you're transitioning from schema three to schema four, and you're either you're adding that resource type general for the first time, or you're just looking at updating the metadata overall, um, please do take a look at this list and look to select the option that's the best, most specific fit for each of your DOIs. So now let's look at the timeline for, for making these changes. So we announced the deprecation plans back in December. And over the course of this year, all repositories that are actively using schema three must switch to using schema four. And I'll explain what I mean by actively using in the next few slides here. And I wanna stress that this process is really best started as soon as possible. And so please do reach out to us for support if you have any questions about the material we're covering today and how to get started with this. Our plan date for deprecation is January 1st, 2025. And on this date, DUI registration and updates using schema three will be disabled. There are a couple of things that will change on January 1st, 2025, and there are also several things that will not change. And so I wanna be clear what we mean here when we're talking about deprecation in this context. So as of January 1st, 2025, it will no longer be possible to either create new DOIs using schema three or to update existing DOIs using schema three. So essentially you will not be able to send metadata to data site using schema three. And all new DOI registrations and updates to existing DOIs have to be done with schema four. But otherwise, I wanna stress that nothing else is going to change for schema three DOIs. So when a major version of the data site metadata schema is deprecated, there's no change to DOI resolution. So these DOIs will continue to persist, be valid findable DOIs that resolve to a URL. And as findable DOIs, all of these existing schema three DOIs are still part of the data site metadata store, which means they are still retrievable via data sites APIs and services. You can also still make updates to these DOIs, but the distinction is that these updates have to be done using schema four. So let's say you have a schema three DOI that you don't update to schema four in advance of January 1st, 2025. Um, it's not the case that you're stuck and this metadata can never be updated again, um, but rather any updates to that DOI have to be done with schema four going forward to be accepted. And so this means that while we're encouraging everyone to update their schema three DOIs to schema four, the folks who need to make changes um, imminently are those who are actively using schema three in their workflows. And so by this, I mean that if you are creating new DOIs with schema three, or if you are updating your previously created schema three DOIs, but you're still using schema three, if that applies to you and you don't make changes, those workflows are going to break on January 1st of 2025. And just to give you a sense of how many users this applies to, um, we've identified around 260 repository accounts that have used schema three at all since the beginning of last year. And that's over, out of over just over 3000 repositories. Um, and looking at the number of DOIs that were updated in 2023, um, just under 1% of those were using schema three. Right, so if you're here, um, presenting a data site member or consortium organization, there are three steps that we're asking you to take. And so first I want you to check if you've got schema three DOIs and I'll show you how to do that here. And then if your system is still actively updating or creating new schema three DOIs, you'll need to update your repository to use schema four going forward. And then finally, we recommend that you change your existing schema three DOIs to use schema four. And so I'll go through each of these steps with some detail on this webinar. We've also published a transition guide on our support site um, that has even more detail. And so I encourage you to review this guide and share it with other staff of your organization, including any technical staff who will be making these changes. And also again, to please reach out to us to, for support with any questions, any step of the way. And so the first thing to do is to check if you have schema three DOIs. So there's an API request in this slide which you can modify to do this um, by replacing the placeholder with your own repository account ID. So where it's abc.def, you'll put in your own repository account ID there. You can also log into Fabrica, go to the DOIs tab and scroll down to look at the schema version facet on the left. And when you do this check, you'll also wanna check when those DOIs were last updated. So in the API request, you'll see the sort equals minus updated, that's sorting from the most recently updated to the least recently updated. So the ones at the top will be the most recent ones and look at the dates to see when you were last pushing those updates. Similarly in Fabrica, 
if you're filtering down to see the schema three DOIs, the results list by default is sorted by the date updated. So if you've done this check, and if you don't have any schema three DOIs, then you're in great shape, you're all set, you don't have to make any changes. But if you do have schema three DOIs and they were updated or created recently, then you want to ensure that your workflows are updated to use schema four going forward. And so again, this step is required just if you're creating new schema three DOIs, or if you previously created DOIs in schema three and you're still making those updates using schema three. So your repository needs to start using schema four for all new DOI registrations and updates. And you've got a few options for how to do this. So you can switch to schema four XML metadata submission. And for most schema three users, this is going to be the most straightforward option. Schema four metadata can be submitted via the MDS API the REST API in the XML attribute, or by using the Fabrica file upload tool. Whichever method you're currently using here, you can continue to use it when you update the schema version. You can also choose if you'd like to transition to the REST API and submit JSON metadata, or to use the Fabrica form, which has an interface for filling out the different metadata schema fields. And I say XML is the easiest option, um, just because that's the only option that currently supports Schema 3. So we know that everyone who is still using Schema 3 is using XML. Um, and for this reason, I'm going to focus on those XML metadata changes here. But please do also refer to our support documentation if you'd like details on those other options. So for XML, there are three places um, that you may need to change from Schema 3 to Schema 4. So first, you'll need to change the Schema version where you have kernel 3 or possibly kernel 3.0 or kernel 3.1, you'll need to change this to kernel 4. You could also specify here a minor version like kernel 4.5. Just know that kernel 4 is always going to be pointing to the latest minor version of schema 4. So right now that's equivalent to kernel 4.5. Um, and that since all minor versions are backwards compatible, um, it, we recommend just pointing to kernel four. That way you can don't have to change it again when we have a new minor version, you can just automatically start to take advantage of those updates. The next change is if your system doesn't do this already to include that required resource type property with the required resource type general attribute. And so for this, you'll wanna take it the list of options for resource type general and choose the most specific and appropriate one for each record. And then finally, if your system is using that contributor type funder, you'll need to change your submissions to use the funding reference property. Um, and there's more details on this in the support docs, which explain how to structure the new property. Um, and that's also in the, the schema documentation, of course, how to put that together. And so once you made these three changes, then your metadata will be compatible with schema four, and you can push those updates to your DOIs. And so the last step here is to change your existing schema three DOIs to use schema four. Um, and we strongly recommend this, even if your system is already updated to use schema four, um, just so you can ensure seamless updates once schema three metadata is no longer accepted. This step can technically be done at any time, including after the deprecation date, as I mentioned. Um, we're just recommending to avoid doing this now so you to, to start doing this now so you can avoid um, any surprises when, it, when it's deprecated. So for example, if your system is using that existing schema three metadata as a basis for updates, um, you're likely run into problems when we deprecate unless you're proactively planning for those updates to use schema four going forward. It's also an opportunity to add or update the resource type general. And also just to review your overall metadata quality, identify potential improvements, um, taking advantage of the latest schema changes. And so during this transition year, um, the data site team is here for you to help with moving from schema to schema four from schema three. So you can check out our support documentation, including the guide updating from schema three to schema four, as well as the schema four documentation. You can also contact us at support at datasite.org for assistance or with any questions you have about these changes. And you can also reach out to your consortium lead if you are a part of a consortium. Um, consortium leads have been notified um, and are prepared to support with this. And we're also working with consortium leads with any questions they have. And with that, I will turn it over for questions. Oh. Just looking at the Q&A. 
Oh, okay. I see a couple have been answered already here. Awesome. Um, I just want to point to one that's already been answered just because it's really important. Um, what consequences do I face if I do not update existing registered schema three DOIs to schema four by January 20, um, 2025? Um, and as Sarah said in the, in the typed answer there, you can update already registered ones beyond January, um, again, using schema four, but you will not be able to register new ones with schema three or to update those ones with schema three metadata. So Practically speaking, if you try to then send a schema three update to an existing DOI after that, you'll get an error um, and you will be prompted to use schema four instead of schema three. Um, I'm gonna look at the schema three related questions first and then we can go back to the ones here that are more general. Um, so, are there specific instructions for DSpace-based repositories? I know that they are working on updates for that. Um, so the latest versions of DSpace would support schema four, but older ones might not. Um, I would reach out to the DSpace, um, if there's a Google group for that, um, to get any updates there. We don't have or, um, platform specific instructions on our site at the moment. Um, and another question here, if transitioning from schema three to 4.x, will we incur redeposit charges? Absolutely not. Um, so any metadata updates do not have a charge associated with them. Um, it's only the DOI registration where it's the per DOI charge, or in some cases the tiered charges. So, um, you can update without any worry about that. Okay, so looking at some of the other questions, are the preset value lists kept in sync with other authoritative vocabularies such as core or DINI? Um, they're not synced up exactly, but we do look to other vocabularies um, as we're looking to update in those lists. So there are things that overlap and there are things where we might take inspiration from a definition of another vocabulary. And then for the geolocation, any special consideration? What goes into such details? Longitude, latitude, box point, um, or just mention country, region, et cetera. Um, you can do either or both. So there's the geolocation place subproperty, and there's also the, the point and the geolocation box ones. And so you can use those together or separately. Um, if you just got the, the place name, that's fine. Or if you want to also include bounding box point um, with or without place name, those all those combinations are acceptable. And nice, that's good news about the crosswalk. Yeah, I knew they were working on that. Check out the chat here. Um, yes, yeah, do we have any other questions? Oh, okay, one more. Um, let's see. So why the request to introduce API endpoints for machine-friendly direct access to data um, didn't make it into schema 4.5? Um, I think you're referring to the proposed distribution property. Um, we need to revisit that based on some of the feedback we got. Um, and as we, we've talked about having breaking changes and non-breaking changes um, in this webinar, it's really important that we get introducing a new property, right? Um, because then to go back and change it is a breaking change and that's disruptive for everyone. So we're just taking the time to make sure we have the design of that um, the way it should be. Good question. schemas will you be using when you perform your crosswalk? Um, so we 
we have a few mappings that are in the the schema docs. Um, for example, the the pittance one that Sarah mentioned in the four point five um, release. Um, we're also happy to support you if say whatever schema you're using locally and you've got questions about how it maps to the data site schema. Um, but we don't have you know every schema in the world published with a crosswalk to data sites. So if you've got specific ones you would like support with, happy to to help with that. Um, is it possible to pull stats on how many repositories use metadata schema 4.5 or generate a list of repositories and the metadata schema they use? Um, it's a good question. So for the schema version, um, that is for the most part recorded as the major version. So if you looked at that um, API request earlier where it was schema version equals three, um, that would be, you could use schema version equals four. Um, some repositories can record the minor version um, if you're specifying that in the XML, but that's not as commonly done. So when we're looking at, say, adoption of schema 4.5, what we're looking at is how many repositories are using the publisher identifier property or who is using the new resource type general values. Um, and we're also looking at overall adoption of schema 4 as a major version. Are there specific instructions for how to integrate DUI's schema four with DSpace based repositories? Um, I think there was another question earlier where someone shared the a pull request for DSpace. Um, so I would look to the I would look to that and their documentation for uh, gosh, questions about making that transition with DSpace software. Um, was DMPID and RRID incorporated in the previous metadata schema or newly added in 4.5? Um, so DMP um, IDs, so the resource type general for that is output management plan, a little bit less specific than data management plan. That was added, I believe, in 4.4. Um, An RRID is not currently part of the schema, um, although there is a proposal in the works for adding it as a related identifier type. Great questions. Um, any plans for reducing the distance between the data site schema and the DCAT AAP schema, um, which is becoming more and more popular? Um, not specifically at like from that angle of like looking at reducing the distance, but that is one that we look at um, kind of looking at the structure um, for comparison with the schema. Yeah. And Yes, any any changes to the schema as well as um, proposals to change the schema will be announced. Um, we're looking at having a new request for comments with some schema changes coming out in the coming weeks. So you can look for that shortly. All right. Um, there's no further questions. Um, we might wrap this up. I just want to say that um, please do reach out to us at support at um, if you've got any questions about the material today, um, whether it's the schema 4.5 changes or transitioning to schema 3, um, or contact your consortium lead. Um, and our support site, um, support.datasite.org, 
um, is a hub for resources on making the transition from three to four. Um, and yeah, thank you so much everyone for joining us today. Really appreciate all the great questions. <laughs>